Today is an exciting day. So Excel recently got a set of amazing new functions for everyday users. These are formulas just as easy and great as the unique and sort functions or filter and XLOOKUP. So functions that we can all easily use without thinking too much. These functions today are really for everyone. For example, with text split, you can easily split your text to multiple cells. So no matter how many spaces you have in that text, you can forget about left, right, mid functions. And that's not all. You get access to many other useful functions. But before we jump in, remember that it's going to take some time for these functions to get rolled out to Office 365 users. Check the description of this video for an update on availability. Now I can't wait to show these to you, so let's just jump in. Let's start with the amazing two call and two row functions. So here I have names in multiple columns and I want to combine everything into a single column. I can easily do that with a new to call function. I'm just going to select my array. That's it. Close the bracket, press enter, and I have everything spilled in a single column. Now imagine the possibilities you have right now. You could get a unique list of values by putting these in the unique function. The two row function is very similar to this, except that you get your values spilled into the row. So if I go with two row here, select my range, close bracket, press enter, I get everything spilled horizontally. Now again, you can put this in the unique function as well, but this time we just need to specify that our values are in columns. So we have to put true here, close bracket, press enter, and we get a horizontal unique list. Next up, we have the text split function. So here I have a list of full names and I want to split them into separate columns. I'm just going to start typing text split and we have this amazing function, which you can do a lot with, and I'm going to create a separate video on this, but here's the simplest use. You select your text and then you define your delimiter. Basically based on what do you want the text split? In this case, based on a space, I'm going to put it in quotation marks and that's it. Check this out. I press enter. I get Walter Tobias Miller split into three separate columns. Let's drag this down and I have my names split properly. Now we also get two other similar functions that help us work easier with text. We have text after and text before. So let's go with text before. If this is my text and I say the delimiter is a space, what do I get? I get the first name. So by default, it gives you the first instance. But if you want everything before the second space, you can go with a two here. I'll just put this back to a one and drag this down. So this is similar to the left function, except that it's a bit more flexible because it allows you to define your delimiter. We also get text after here. This is our text and after a space. And let's say after the first instance, we get everything after the first name. If I change this to two, it's everything after the second instance. Now, of course, you can use a function to get this to be dynamic or use the if error function to avoid errors like this. Next up, we have vStack and hStack. These allow you to append your data together. Here I have two separate ranges for name and salary. Now these could be in separate sheets and I want to append them on top of one another. I'm going to use vStack for vertical stacking. Array one is this and array two is this. You can of course add multiple arrays. I'm going to press enter and I get all of them together. So imagine the possibilities. If this was a table, I'm just going to press control T, convert it to a table. And this was a table as well. And I end up with a new name here. Check what happens to my results. They update automatically. What does HStack do? Well, it does a similar thing, except it spills the data horizontally. So I'm just going to press control Z and remove these names. And let's do it right here. Start off with HStack. Array one, let's use our tables now, is this one. Array two is this one, close bracket, press enter. And we get them appended beside one another. Next up, we have wrap rows and wrap columns. 
So I have my data here in a single row and I want to put these below one another. So this should come below the names and this should come below that. I can easily do that with the new wrap rows function. You define your vector, in this case, it's this range, and then the wrap count. So from where do you want it to start wrapping? Well, after the third value here. So put a three close bracket for center and I get my data wrapped properly. How does it look with wrap columns? Well, it does a similar thing. We're going to select our range and then decide the wrap count for our column. So if I select three here, my names are going to end up in the same column like this. Next up, we have the take and drop functions. With these functions, you get to keep or drop the parts of your data set that you don't want. So here, for example, let's say I just want to keep the top three rows. I'm going to start off with the take function define my array and for rows, just put in a three close bracket per center and I get the first three rows. If I want the last three rows, I'm going to put a minus three. What if I just want to keep two columns? I'm going to add a two for the column per center and I get to keep the first two columns. This data isn't sorted. So let's say I want to get the values based on the top three salaries. Well, that's not a problem because I can put my range inside the sort function. That's what I want to sort. I want to sort this based on the salary column, which is in the third column. And I want it in descending order. I'm going to close the bracket, press enter, and I get the records with the top three salaries. If I only want to keep the two columns, put a two here and we're done. What about drop? Well, drop works in a similar way, except that you get to drop whatever you define. If I select my range here and say, I want to drop three, it's going to drop the first three rows. If I say minus three, it's going to drop the last three rows. And of course you can combine this with other functions like we did with take. Next we have choose rows and choose calls. So with choose calls, which is probably going to be the more commonly used one, you get to define your array and then the columns that you want to keep. So you can define them based on an index number. Let's say I want to keep column one and column three only because I just want the names and salaries back. I'll put a one and a three per center and I get names and salaries back. Now you can probably picture the potential of this. What if I didn't want everything returned, but only the salaries that are above a hundred thousand? Well, I could combine this with a filter function. So from my range here, I'm going to get it filtered before I choose what to return. This is my array. What I want included are salaries that are greater than a hundred thousand. Now close the bracket for the filter function and press enter. And I get to choose what I want returned with choose calls. Now, how does choose rows work? Well, it works in a similar way. You get to define your array and then you get to define the rows that you want to keep. So let's say I want to keep the first row, the fifth row and the sixth row, close bracket per center. And that's what I get. Last, we have the expand function. With expand, you get to expand your range and add additional columns or rows. So for example, here I have department and name. I want to add an extra column for salary. And I want that populated with the word missing. So I'm going to start off with the expand function, select my range here for rows. I want it to be as many rows as I have. So I'm just going to skip that argument for columns. I want to add an extra column. I already have two columns. So I'm going to put a three. Then if I don't put anything for the pad width, close the bracket per center, I get an extra column appended, but with errors. I don't want errors. Instead, I want the word missing. So I'm going to add missing in quotation marks for the last argument. When I press enter, I get missing there. If you wanted to add extra rows to this, so I have three currently. So let's say I go with four and I press enter. I get missing on the bottom here as well. In this case, I don't want, I'm just going to remove that and enter. Now I'm sure this is going to come in handy when you want your ranges to be of the same size inside other functions that work with arrays. So just to demonstrate a simple example based on what we have, 
If I want to stack this on top of another one and I still want missing there, I'm just going to wrap this in the vstack function. That's my array one and my array two. Let's just jump quickly to another sheet. This is the take sheet. I'm going to select this range, close bracket, press enter, and I get my results organized in a nice way. That was a quick introduction to the new functions. And I really want to know what your favorite one is. So please share in the comments below. I have to say for me right now, my favorite one is probably text split. Let me know yours. That was it for today. Thank you for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.